Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like and comment button, sections, things, whatever. Just comment and hit the like button. Today I have for you, without further ado, one of my favorite uh, bands, singers, all that jazz. Mark, is it Tornillo or Tornillo from Accept? Tornillo. It, it is. Okay. I was looking at the Spanish angle, but obviously from New Jersey, you're not Spanish. Well, well, we'll we will be in Latin America in, uh, in the next week. So at the end okay. of next week, so Tornillo then. So That's right. May 1st <laughs> in Sao Paulo. Am I correct? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Thanks for the time, man. I mean, I've got some questions for you. And I've, I've been having... So many people asking me to get somebody from Accept, obviously Wolf or yourself. Um, but I got to ask you a question. I'm uh, I'm flabbergasted here. I'm looking at the lineup. I've interviewed uh, Joel a few times. He's going to be touring with you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, when did you guys bring in Huey Lewis? <laughs> wait, wait, Huey wait, Lewis? wait, wait. Oh, Huey Lewis. Sorry. Oh, Uva. <laughs> we call him uh, actually. Uh... Huey Lewis once in a while, you know, <laughs> Uva Lewis in the news. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah. So you guys have been in the band trip. for a while. I mean, Uva's been in the band since, uh, what, 2014, I think. Yeah, no, I, 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 I get it. Job. I was just, that was one of my corny jokes, Huey Lewis. Yeah, <laughs> Huey Lewis. <laughs> Huey Lewis. We call him Jerry Lee Lewis, Lewis sometimes. <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. Actually, Jerry Lee Lewis. Are you a fan of okay? So you, you you know um um the Jerry Lewis telethon, right? Yeah. People always shit on him, and they're thinking all these things. But the great things he does, he actually did. You know that one time, he actually got a kid to get up out of his wheelchair and walk over to the TV to turn off the Jerry Lewis telethon. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's in that Jeff Ross. <laughs> you got that one? You got that, eh, Mark? Yeah, I got it. That's a Jeff Ross joke. Anyways, a let's talk one. about the album and let's talk about everything else going on. Um, I've been listening to the album. I gotta tell you, it's amazing. Humanoid. And the first thing I look at is I'm thinking cyborg. Okay. Yep. And then I'm thinking Wolf Hoffman. And I'm thinking he's the closest thing on the planet to a cyborg. How did you guys come up with this title? <laughs> Actually, Wolf came up with that title. He uh, had an idea and uh, wrote the music around that and then uh, gave it to me and I had to figure out a story. And luckily for me, I was a uh, big Star Trek nerd and uh, went right right for the Borg, man. So, Wow. I mean, it's interesting, though, right? Looking at all those Star Trek things and uh, back in the day, I wasn't a big fan, but I look back at that stuff. I'm an Art Bell fan, and I used to listen to talk radio. All that shit that they talked about 30, 40 years ago, it's all come to fruition. Coming true. Back, right? Yeah. It's like, it's insane. People way ahead, there, way, somebody had a crystal ball or something, man. Well, it's, it's almost like the Simpsons. Like, who's writing the Simpsons sketches? The CIA? Because every time oh. they write one, yep. it comes yeah, to fruition. I, I it's, I it's, interviewed it's, Harry it's Shearer before, but uh, actually, before I interviewed Harry, I thought uh, I thought he was a writer, but he's a voice. But I wish I could get a hold of one of those writers to find out where are they getting their stuff. Like some where of the stuff they... is too too coincidental. Somebody's got a, got a time machine or something. Oh man! <laughs> well, you know what they say: so and so runs Hollywood, right? So you never know. But anyways, yeah, I want to ask you about a couple songs on the on the album. Um, I gotta tell you, Ravages of Time is one of my favorites. It's a, it's a great Wolf always uh, kind of writes a song like Winter Dreams. Have you guys played that live often? Yes. And we used we used to do that when we when we played Russia a lot in the winter. We would do Winter Dreams. Yeah. Um I haven't done it in a while. Obviously, we won't be going to Russia this year. So <laughs> yeah. uh for obvious reasons. Yeah, but, um, it's a damn shame. Yeah, but that song "Ravages of Time" is amazing. Um, I love the lyrics. Uh, straight up, Jack. Tell us about how um, did you write it by yourself, or was it a collaboration with uh, with Wolf and the other band members? 
Which song? Straight Up Jack. I wrote the lyrics first. Yeah. I gave him the wolf. And uh, it's funny. I was, we were just, I was just talking about this one on, on another interview. And normally if, if I give wolf lyrics, he'll send me back a song and, and it's always something that, that works. Um, or he'll write music, send me the music with nothing on it as a template. So I'll go, there's no set formula. But uh, this one we kind of wrote together because he sent me back a piece of music and it was kind of dark and I didn't think it worked. So when we got to the studio, he and I sat down and rewrote the song and that's what you have now. So The interesting thing about Straight Up Jack is you can take it in two ways, right? For me anyways. Um, yep. Obviously the Jack Daniels thing, straight up, but you cannot straight up Jack, meaning be honest with me. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's the way I was kind of looking at it, but then obviously, well, the, I was act basically the whole the whole twist of the song is no frills. I don't no want no frills. Don't want just, just give it to me straight. Yeah, actually, there's a movie I watched about Che Guevara years ago, and he was a medical doctor. Long story short, they were looking for a place to stay in the mountains of Brazil or something, Argentina, and the guy said um, he had like a assist, and uh, Che Guevara was a doctor, and he says it might be cancer, you need to get it treated. And he had a back and forth with his uh, traveling companion. And he said, well, why didn't you tart it up? He goes, no, the sooner he gets it treated, you got to be straight up with the guy, the better. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So no, no, uh, no don't bullshit. sugarcoat it. Man. No, it doesn't help anybody. Right. <clears throat> it doesn't. Um, Frankenstein. Child, had... baby, but... <laughs> Pardon me. Frankenstein, I have to say, I don't like that song. And I'll, you want me to tell you why? It's my opinion. Sure. Because there's a game at the casino called Frankenstein. In the last two weeks, I lost two grand. <laughs> no joke. I went to see Sticks. Okay. Lawrence Gowan gave me uh, some comp tickets to see Sticks at this uh, island resort and casino in Harris, Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I went there. I thought everything was hunky dory. I started playing Frankenstein. I was up five hundred bucks US. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Kept playing. Power up. No, I love the song. Yeah, I should have walked away. But um, anyways, no, I love this song, man. I'm just joking around. It's a great tune. That was a uh, that was one that we were uh, <clears throat> actually Uva and, and Uva and Wolf wrote the music for that and. Uh, and Frankenstein was just a working title. And we tried so many different things to to get rid of Frankenstein, but he wouldn't go away. <laughs> like I, I literally wrote the lyrics like three times and tried different ways of, of, you know, different ideas for the song. And none of them, nobody liked them. Everybody was like, no, it, Frankenstein's the only thing that, that hits home like that. So work on that. So I said, well... That's been done a million times, but I'll, I'll I'll take a stab at it, and I wrote it from the monster's point of view from for a change, you know. Herman Poor guy, he, what does he know? He didn't do anything wrong. He just woke up on a slab one day and said, "Who the hell am I? What the hell is this? And why does everybody hate me?" Like like what's his name? John was was the late John Gwynn, Herman Munster. Yeah, Fred Gwynn. Yeah, Fred Gwynn. Thank you, thank you. But anyways, um, before I forget this stuff, I want to thank John. Um, uh, for Freeman from Freeman Promotions for setting this up. Um, get the album. I'm telling you guys, one of the best accept albums um, ever. I've I have I've had it for about uh, about a month, and there's like 12 tracks. And April 26th, it's um you can you'll you'll get it. It goes release um, date, yes. And but you can get pre-orders. So I'm gonna put the links down below for everybody to to check it out. But it's a damn good album. Um, I can't say anything uh, less than that. I got back into Accept, and I'll tell you how. I was, I was into Accept years ago, and then I got segued into other stuff. And a friend of mine, Jeff, Mike Jeffries, years ago, a few years ago, he uh, he put, he put turned on, I got to tell you, it was fucking amazing, because I'm a, I'm a documentary buff, and Kool-Aid. I'm a big, I, like, I watch all that stuff about um, Jim Jones and all that stuff. Yep. And the way that that song was written, and even the video was amazing, Kool-Aid. I mean... Um, that brought me back to you guys. Not that I really left, but I mean, that song is, is just amazing. So everybody that's 
you know, has been on the fringe. You got to go back to um, those albums because it's just as good as Humanoid. Yeah, I, I, I love that song too, man. I was, uh, that was just a, an idea that was presented to me, you know, from by Wolf and Gabby at the time. And I, I remembered the whole, you know, Jim sound. Jones thing, but I did a deep dive to, to, re to write the song and really got schooled, man. There was so much involved in that whole conspiracy. Like, holy crap. I did. I ne didn't remember the stuff about the governor and and the guys getting shot at the airport and all that. Oh shit. yeah, it was like holy crap! There was so much going on there. Even Concrete Blonde covered it. Well, I mean, everybody covered it, like a lot of people. But Concrete Blonde had a song called Jonestown. Um, yeah, just just amazing stuff. So I want to ask you about a couple of things um, unique. Um, your voice um, to me, um, I don't. I don't want to categorized but you've got a raspy voice and i'm wondering to me a person that can't even speak let alone sing how do you keep your voice intact to keep that kind of fluid um because i know you warm up a lot and you and I've, I've recently um seen an interview that you don't feel like you're in the moment until you get that first song out live you can do your warm-ups with the band but until you get your first song out your 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 vocals you don't feel are this is what I interpreted they're not as strong until you get that first one out. What do you do for prep to keep your voice so strong? Because it sounds painful. It, it it is painful sometimes, you know. Uh, I other than that that the warm up and I try to cool down. Uh, there's not much else you can do. I try not to talk a lot, <laughs> you know. Uh, especially like loud talking in clubs and that kind of shit, because that'll kill you. Um, that kills your throat. But uh, just uh, try and stay healthy helps. You know, if you get sick, your throat's gone. So, and I've had I've had that misfortune a few times. Uh, what are you gonna do? Do you try to do the, it's the tough lemon? to stay healthy on the road too? You know, it's 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 yeah. it's difficult when you're traveling all the time. But oh yeah, I mean. That's there's the main the, focus um, is not to get sick. Yeah, and, and like you said, being on the road, there's the temptation to always indulge because everybody's coming after you. You want to do this, they want to buy you that, they want to buy you this. So, I mean, you got to have discipline, which you obviously have. Now, let's talk about Joel Hoekstra for a second here. Have you ever worked with Joel? Mm -hmm. I have never worked with Joel. I've worked with uh, Chris Caffrey, okay. who's his PSO partner. Um, well, that's how the, you guys I, got set up with him. Is that correct? I'm sorry. That's how you guys got set up with um, having Joel come in. No, Is it's not correct? actually. Oh, it's not actually. We uh, we we needed somebody to fill it, you know, to take Phil's place on on the tour. And before I even knew what was going on, Wolf had, uh, I think, I think it was Ed Aborn that that suggested Joel to him. Okay. And and had his number. And Wolf asked me if I was familiar with Joel and you know what wasn't doing it. I think it was a good idea. And I was like, hell yes, it's a good idea. And it just so happened that TSO was coming through Nashville. Nashville. And and he reached out to uh Joel and went and met him and Chris at the uh at the hotel and they had a nice talk. And Joel and Joel said I would Joel actually said I would be honored to do it. And it's like, fuck yeah, bring him on, let's do it. Yeah, he's, I'm actually going down first next week with him. So, yeah, he's he's the ultimate um, showman as well. Like, I mean, I've seen he's him. He's a uh, monster player. You see, you I see just him play with CSO and rock crews, and it was just he's, yeah. he's mind blowing. Go check out one of his videos with Cher. That'll blow your mind too if you haven't seen some of yeah, those. Yeah, right. I mean, the guy goes from. Uh, one extreme to the next, but he doesn't lose his place. You know what I mean? He doesn't no. change up. He can make it work. No, as, so, as, as I said, I saw him do his acoustic thing with uh, Brandon Gibbs on the boat, and up with an acoustic guitar, he blew my mind. It was just like insane. Yeah. So, looking forward to it. So, uh, it won't keep you much longer. I know it's presser day, and I know these are difficult. So, um, you got... Uh, Martin came in. He's playing bass. 
And then you also have, mm-hmm. I got to tell you, I, 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 I chatted with this guy on Facebook, Christopher Williams. What a, what a, what a drummer. Just amazing. He is. He, he, he's, he's the whole package, man. That kid, I mean, he's, he's learned it. He, he grew up playing drum and bugle core, that kind of stuff. I mean, he's a, he is a, a his whole world is drums. So, you know, the, the reason and he knows everything about them and he can write charts and read them and, you know, it's, it's just insane. So I'm going to put, I think if I remember, I'll put a link down there. I thought you guys, you guys played in St. Charles, I think Arcata, Arcata or whatever. And you're playing Kool Aid. I was watching that song, and they, the 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 your um, photographer was zooming in on Chris and the and the tech back there because something happened, and Chris was playing, talking to the tech. I swear to God, he tied his shoes, baked a birthday cake, and changed a snare. He didn't miss a beat <laughs> while he was playing. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. So it is pretty yeah. crazy, right? Right. So a couple cliche and questions. Paul was twirling friend. at the time too, right? He was, and I wondered where the third hand came yeah. from. So I won't keep you longer. Um, this show is um, almost in the United States. We're about a mile from, uh, we're on the border. Um, favorite Canadian band, past or present? Probably Rush, I'm going to say. <laughs> Bro, I know you're going to say that. They all say that, but I mean... Rush was one well, of the I, big I, ones. I was a big Triumph fan also, so. Yes. Yes. I love Triumph. Actually, if I had to put the two together, because I'm not into prog rock, I like guitar-oriented, like Chris, like Rick Emmett, uh, um, Mike Levine, and um, I yeah. mean, just, yeah, I was into Triumph big time, too. Um, you're going to be doing that South American tour. Um, when, or are you guys um, routing anything right currently for a, North American to our Canada and the States support human uh, after so- after South America we're uh, we're going to be doing summer festivals in Europe mm-hmm. and then we have a headline tour in Europe starting in I believe it's late October so there is a window in there between the summer festivals and the beginning of that and um, from what I understand they're working on putting something together for North America I haven't seen anything yet so I kind of hope so see. because I think it is, it'll be late summer, early. I would hope so because like you, like you, I know you played over at Kuwait and Sioux, Michigan. You got a big following in North America, but I believe Wolf doesn't he live in Illinois? Wolf lives in Nashville. Everybody's in Nashville now. A lot of them, yeah. Uva still lives in Germany. Actually, Wolf has a place in Italy also, so he's back and forth, um, and has family in Germany still. So, okay. But, um, but yeah, he he, Christopher and Phil and Martin are all in Nashville. Every, I mean, like, what is uh, just briefly? What's the scene in Nashville like? Are you going to get a place there? Because everybody I talk to has gone to Nashville in the last 12, 15 years. Everybody, it's not country. It's just a big music town. It's and it's and a lot of the old rockers live there now. You know, I yeah. mean, Mick Mars lived there. Uh, a, a, a whole Karabi. bunch of people live there. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, like it used to be thought of as, um, you know, a country yodeling town. And now it's like it's it's being overtaken by the 80s rock lords. Music City. Yeah. It's crazy. There is a great music scene there. I mean, it, it, people move there thinking they're going to get famous. And I'll tell you what, if you move there to get famous, you better start working. Because the guys that play there are just insane players. Um you know, if you go down on Broadway, watch the guys that play for tips, you'll never want to play again. Good point. I got one more second for you. John Albany used to be the guitar player for uh, Lee Aaron, the metal queen in Canada. And he lives there. He's got a studio. He just had uh, Leonard Skinner in there. And he said the talent that's in Nashville is so amazing. He, he said exactly what you said. He said these guys busting for tips can outplay a lot of professionals on the East and West coast. It's just, they didn't, they, you know I mean? He, the lightning didn't strike yet, but he, he just said, it's just friggin' amazing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it is, it's, it's scary <laughs> how good they are. Wow. Okay, man. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? Uh, subscribe. So yeah.
Yeah, don't sound too confident. Uh, yeah, subscribe as Mark Tornillo <laughs> of Tornillo of accepts as this uh, program and uh, great interviews. I can put all the links down below so you guys will buy all the merch and uh, make sure you see them on tour. All right, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate your time, buddy. Hey, no problem, bro. Thank you very much for, for uh, your support. We appreciate it. Anytime. Bye.